Today you are finally going to be able to leave your mom's basement because I'm going to teach you how to use Keeper for online arbitrage and run a real business and actually make money. There's a few questions you want to ask yourself when you find a product you want to sell on Amazon. Is the product actually selling? How fast is it selling? At what price can you sell it? And can you actually get the buy box? Of course, smart depends, we are going to use Kipa to answer these questions. So to get started with Kipa, you want to go to Kipa.com and create an account so i am already logged in but you would click here you would create an account and you would download the chrome extension and you can find it right here i will leave a link for you in the description of this video so once you go to a product page so we are going to use this one as an example just scroll down a little bit and this is Kipa. So this is what we're going to use to answer the questions I told you earlier. Is the product actually selling? There's a few things that you can actually look at to figure out if the product is actually selling. The first thing would be the number of reviews. You can find that out by looking at the bottom graph right there on Kipa. And uh, it's kind of hard to see, um, but as you can see, there's a small green light going up right there. This is the number of reviews. You can see the review count when you over over the line right there. And you can see that if you move to the right, so when you move to the right, you, you, go, you go forward in time. When you go left, you go backward in time. As you can see the little, the little thing right below that gives you the date and the time. So when you go through time, you see that the reviews are actually increasing, which is a good sign. If the reviews are increasing, it means that this listing does have sales, this product does sell, because if it was not selling, people would not leave review on it. So the number of reviews is actually a good indicator, but it's not the best one. This is one that you can look at, because sometimes the one that I'm going to talk about right now is not available. But the best way is to look at what we call the best seller rank. You can find it by clicking on the data tab right here. And on the top right, uh, you can see the sales rank, the current sales rank, which is for this product, product 2650, which is pretty good. So what is the best seller rank? And I'm going to stop repeating best seller rank here. I'm going to say BSR for now because I do not want to say best seller rank 50 times in this video. But uh, what it is, is you can think of it as a popularity contest. So the product with the higher number, I mean the lower number, so a product with the number one would sell way faster than the product number 100 on the list and so on and so on. 2650 is a really good rank so each different product has its own number its own sales rank below that sales rank you can see the average for the last 30 days the last 60 days the last 90 days the last 180 days um we're going to use that later just do not think of it for now so let's go back to the price history chart now that we know where the sales rank is the best seller rank so here you see that green line um it's Pretty much the same thing as the reviews that we told earlier, but it's on the graph that you can find on the top. So you can see how the, sell, the sales rank evolves through time, if it goes up, if it goes down. Pretty much what I would, um, what I would suggest you to do is to go to junglescout.com, and I'm sorry it's a little bit dark. You go to junglescout.com slash estimator, and from there you can plug in your sales rank. So for this product, it was actually, you can use the average if you want to be more safe to have a better idea of how much this product is actually selling. But um, we're going to use the current one for this video, uh, just for the sake of this example. So you can see that the sales rank is 2650 for this product in the beauty and personal care category. So the sales rank is specific to a certain category. So it will just rank this product in its specific category and not in, on the whole Amazon website. So we are going to go to jungle scout slash estimator. We're going to, and I just forgot uh, what it was. So it was 2,650. So I would enter this right here and in the United States, of course, and we're going to choose beauty and personal care. So we're going to check, you're going to click on estimate sales and you can get a, pretty much an idea of what, how much this product is selling every month. So this product would sell 6,180 times a month. This is one way to answer the first question, which is, um, is this product is actually selling and how fast is it selling actually? So we answer two questions at the same time. But is that it? Of course, no, it would be too easy. This product has two variations. This is what we call variations. So on the same listing, you can have multiple products. And I'm gonna actually use this product as an example, because you can see that 
um, there's way more variation for this one and so if for example this product let's check the um, let's check the sales rank so you can also check by the way by hovering right there on the graph with your mouse um, and we can see that it's around 4,000 4,000, 5,000, just to be safe, just to be safe, I'm gonna put 15,000. And we need to check once again the category. So it's 15,000 in pet supplies. So let's do it again, 50,000. And we're gonna switch the category to pet supplies. And this would be 450 sales per month for this specific product. Um, so we are gonna check, and as I told you, this is not the whole story because there's other stuff that we need to look at. So we already know that this product is selling. It is selling 450 times a week. 450 times a month i'm sorry but as you can see there's a whole lot of, div of different variation there's 21 options from those 21 options the the sales rank would be the same for the whole listing so for all the variations together so we need to figure out how much each variation is actually selling so to do that you would go back to keeper once again and you would click on the variations tab so once you are here by default the variation will be sorted by the one that sells the most to the one that sells the least so to figure that out um you can see the number of reviews for each variation so of course the more the more variation is selling the higher the number of reviews would be on that specific variation so you can see basically the number of variation and the percentage of the total variation for that for that whole listing that this would be so we can pretty much estimate that since this variation the first one got 16 percent of the reviews of the whole listing because uh, if we check this product as this listing has 2537 ratings to reviews same thing this one has 403 so yeah it's pretty much 16 percent so you have this information right there and you 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 will know that you can you can you can estimate that this product this specific product will sell 16 percent of the time on that listing so if you take 400 and 450 you multiply it by 16 percent so this specific variation right here would sell 72 times a month which is okay if you're starting of course but as i told you you need to be aware of that specific thing because do not fall for it because if you for example if we go down we can see that right here some of those variations never solved so if you like don't put all your money over there because no refund after that it's not my fault i told you is that the whole story is that the end no there's another thing that you need to find out to figure out how fast you can sell this specific product because of course you are not going to be the only person selling this product so you need to figure out with how many person you are going to share the buy box. So to do that, we are still going to use Keeper. You're going to click on data. And this time you can see that there's other options right there. So you're going to click on offers. Once you are on offers, you can see that um, there's multiple person selling this product. And there's actually four persons selling this product. This person specifically seems priced way higher. So um, this person, you would not really count that person because this person is not really competitive. But um, there's three persons. You're going to share the sales with three persons more than likely. If you want to be safe, you can put four. Just to be safe. So you're going to share, like, if you sell FBA, you do not have to worry about those persons a lot. Um, but you're going to basically, like, just to be safe, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna act like all those persons are going to share the buy box equally. And you're gonna you're gonna come on the listing, so now you're gonna be five on this listing, which means that safely we can say you can sell 15 a month. You answer the second questions, which is how fast you can sell it, and um, from there you can make your decision of how much product you want to stock up. I like to take two months of inventory. Usually this is what I do, uh, but depending on how much capital you have, depending on how much money you want to spend, depending on how much risk you want to take, uh, it may be less for you. Like. You need to figure that out for yourself but what i do personally if you want to follow me is two months of inventory um especially if it's um if it's a time if it's a limited time sales i'm gonna do that maybe i'm gonna be more if it's actually a limited time sales it depends on a lot of on a lot of factors but um you're gonna figure that out with experience know that you know all that you need to know at what price you can actually sell this product because of course if this product if you can sell this product at $15, you're not going to buy it for $20 because you're not going to make money. You're going to lose money and you're going to go out of business super fast. What you're going to do is come back to price history and from there you see that pink line. 
This is what we call the buy box. You can see the price action for this specific product um, through time. So by the way, I forgot to tell you, you can click right there on the right to change the time frame on Keepa. So right there, I have it set for three months. This is what I usually look for. Um, but I sometimes go back to, to the yearly view into the all time view just, you know, to make more analysis and figure out where the price is going to be and what I can expect the product to, to sell for. So for the, for example, for this product, um, and what I do is I do not set a fixed price, but I, I try to figure out a range, you know, an acceptable range, like what feels more likely, what, at what range I can actually sell this product. Um, and for this one, for example, I see that it was for a short time at $12.99, but the price picked back up real quick. So um, the range I am going to expect to sell it, um, for example, right there, I saw that it went up all the way to $18. It went a couple times under $14.99. So what I would do is uh, for this product, I, will, I would probably say, set it for the lowest price that I'm going to set it is $14.50 and the highest 18, but this product is pretty easy to figure out. So I wanted to show you this product as well because the other one was pretty easy um, to figure out, but I, want, I wanted to give you another example. So let's say you found this product while it was selling for $29.99 as FBA. You can see that there's another offer as FBM, but let's not look at it for now. Um, if this product was selling for $29.99, um, would you expect to be able to sell it for $29.99? Not really, because you can see that it was a peak and it never did really sell at that price. And so this is why, you know, it's important to check the to check the price, because if if you if you were profitable at $29.99 and you're not at when it's selling most of the time at $18.95, does not make no sense to buy this product. This is why I said you need to find an acceptable range, like the range that you are most likely going to be able to sell this product for figure that out see if you're going to be profitable at your minimum price and see if you're going to be of course going to be profitable at your maximum price but um see see how low the product is probably gonna go and from there see if you're profitable at that price and if it makes sense for you to buy the product if if you were if you if you're going to be okay if the product actually goes that low this is what you need to figure out and lastly you want to make sure that you can actually get the buy box for the product you want to buy. Because it's all fun and games until you get a product, you buy 200, 300 units and you actually never get the buy box, so you lose all your money, okay? I do not want you to do that. In that case, no refund from me. I warned you, it's not my problem, okay? You need to make sure you can actually get the buy box for the product you buy. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that Amazon is not on the listing or at least not on the listing most of the time. So here's an example. So this is the first product that we saw. Um, you see that orange thing in the back. This is your worst nightmare. You do not want, you do not want to buy any product with that in the back. When you see that, it means that Amazon is actually selling the product on the listing. You do not want to get on that listing. You're going to lose money. Okay, you're not going to be able to get any buy box for rotation. You're going to lose your money. You're not going to make any sales. Except some rare exception. And we'll talk maybe about that in another, in another video where I'll show you how you can figure out if you can actually um, compete with Amazon. But most of the time, and especially if you are a beginner and if you are seeing this video, it probably means that you're a beginner. Do not compete with Amazon. Because look, if we go on data here and we click on buy box statistics, we can see who wins the buy box. And if you don't know what the buy box is, that thing right there. So as you can see, you can see right there. Ships from Amazon.com, but most importantly, sold by. And winning the buy box means that um, it's actually your offer that shows in that box right there. And that when someone clicks add to cart or buy now, it it will actually get your product and not someone else's product. So this is what winning the buy box means. If we check buy box statistics, so who wins the buy box most of the time, you can see that Amazon is on this, like wins the buy box 92% of the time. And um, there's not a person actually, this one, that wins 7% of the buy box, but like more, more than likely you're not gonna win. This person wins, you're not gonna win. This person got 3,309 reviews, so it's probably it's 
he probably got a big account and he's probably doing a wholesale. So Amazon shares the buy box with him. It's not going to be the case for you. So do not fall in that trap. Another thing that you need to look for is, is the brand on the listing? So if the brand is on the listing, if they own the brand, same thing, you're not going to win the buy box against them. You're just not going to win. So right here, for example, with this chair from Mimoglad. And if you see that it's exactly like, I don't even know if I need to explain it to you, like sold by Mimoglad. It's the brand, the brand, the one, the persons who own the brand is selling this product. So if you hop on this listing, um, you're not going to sell it. You're just not going to get the buy box. Nobody's going to buy it from you. You're going to lose your money. And especially with a product like that, that is pretty expensive. You're going to lose a lot of money. Don't do it. Same thing for check buy box statistics is even more than that. It's they got 100%. And there's a last example that I want to show you of case scenario where you're never going to get the buy box. And it's a little bit more tricky because um, I've, I've never seen anybody talk about it on YouTube and I had to learn this the hard way. So sometimes there's companies, um, they call them brand management companies. Um, and it is the case on this listing. So one big red flag, by the way, that I saw right directly is that... Um, the price is super flat on Keepa. So when you see that, it's a red flag. And so what are brand management companies? It's companies that basically collab with brands and they bring their whole product on Amazon. And so they have the brand registered on their brand registry. So it's pretty much the same thing as if they own the brand. And you're never going to get the buy box because uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's exactly the same thing as if it was the actual brand that sell the product on Amazon. So if you actually look, one thing you can do is look at the buy box statistics once again and you see that this brand um this account has 97 percent of the buy box you're never gonna get a sale you can also look at the number of reviews um the accounts have 28,000 is a huge amount so um you're never gonna <laughs> you're just never gonna compete with them it's just not gonna work yeah and if you actually like if you actually google this company you're gonna figure out that um it's a company doing um it's a it's a brand management company so that's it for today i hope you learned one thing or two um and if you did i hope you're going to apply it so you can switch your cologne from that dusty um adidas cologne that you used to have and switch it for something like more classy like you can maybe do a little bit step up and go to i don't know like something like Dior savage and it's not a creative fragrance but you get what i'm saying you can upgrade your life maybe leave your cave leave your mom's house uh, and run a real business so um <laughs> I'm just joking, no shades to anyone. Or maybe I do have some shades with some. I'm, I'm just joking. Um, I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, just leave a like below. And um, send it to your friends and stuff, you know. Subscribe to this channel, of course. And uh, I'll be back with more videos soon, so um, stay tuned.